Good morning, John. They say that you can't judge a book by its cover, but I say you can't not judge a book by its cover. That's what the cover is for. There's a reason that this book and this book and this book all look kind of identical. Like, take a real fast look. Fantasy novels, right? You can tell because there's like chiseled words over high contrast illustrations and all the fonts have serifs. Oh my gosh, look at baby Neil Gaiman. He's so cute. Boom! That looked different but very similar, but it's sans serif font, so it's sci-fi. That's the difference! So for obvious reasons, I've been thinking a lot about book covers lately, and I want to share with you today the cover of my book, An Absolutely Remarkable Thing. It's available September 25th, and you can get it for pre-order now. But first, I'd like to give, like, a deeply subjective and incomplete list of some of the best book covers from the last 10 or 15 years. Let's start here with a book that came out in 1986, but I, I promise it's gonna make sense in a second. This is Watchmen. If you've read the comic, you know what this image is. If you haven't, then you probably don't, and I like that a lot about it. It's mysterious, but it's bold and eye-catching. So bright! And I like the bold, very sort of logo design alternate title placement. I mean, obviously iconic, one of the most iconic covers ever, but it's not really one of the things on my list. This is. This is It Devours by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner. And when I first saw it, I thought of the cover of Watchmen. Obviously the color, but also the really sort of bold, comic-y font. I love this image. I love that there's a lot of, like, radial interesting things happening in covers right now. Here's another really good interesting radially designed thing. And I also like that in this case the title kind of becomes the cover rather than there having to be some external design element. Now maybe this is gonna be a little bit surprising. I don't generally tend to like photographic covers, but the pale white arms and this bright red centerpiece of this like lovely pure thing that you really is the kind of thing that you'd like to take a bite out of. The color scheme here obviously was imitated a lot. And I also really like the tininess of the title, like the insignificance of the, the title and the author name. That's a bold choice and, and like Maybe you didn't expect to see Twilight today, but there it is. Let's go more recent. Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. I like this book cover so much. Again, bold color choices, something I'm a huge fan of. There was a trend for a long time in young adult fiction to chop people's heads off, and I think the idea was, like, give people looking at the covers something to relate to, but not too much. Just does that in a really interesting way, and also it is reminiscent of, or evolves on, a similar sort of cloud-based handwritten font thing. Which leads me to uh, one of the best, like, I might be a little bit biased here, but one of the best covers from the last 10 years. This was such a departure when Rodrigo Corral made this for The Fault in Our Stars. I feel like it really leveled up young adult literature. It feels kind of almost branded, and I think that it started off, or was part of, a really important and necessary trend in cover design. My second to last cover, V.E. Schwab's A Darker Shade of Magic. Again, really interesting, thoughtful color choice happening here. This cover, to me, feels kind of full of institutional knowledge, like it knows a great deal about the book that I don't know yet. I like that about it. And finally, the last thing on my list, ba -ba -da -ba 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 is the cover of my book. I realize that I'm biased, but that's okay. I think I have the cutest cat in the world too. And it's not like I designed it. I had minimal input. It was a very scary process and I'm so happy that I'm happy with what happened. To me, this font feels very like pulp. It feels adventure, it feels comic, but then in the background here it feels like you're getting drawn into something that's a little bit mysterious, a little bit creepy, which is exactly what I wanted. Like it feels a little bit ostentatious in its color choice, which if you know the main character of the book, which none of you do yet, that makes a lot of sense. April is a graphic designer herself, the main character in the book, and I, she's very into color choice, but I think that she'd be into how it kind of stands on its own as a design and a little bit of, you know, an identity for the book. All of the English language publishers really like this, so it's gonna be the same cover in the UK, in Canada, in Australia. My book has a cover! John, I'll see you on Tuesday.